I want to preach today on the subject, uh, tell the devil no. Tell the devil no. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, tell the devil no. Come on, tell him again. Tell the devil no. 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 If you have your Bible, won't you turn to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Uh, tell the devil no. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm here on a mission today. I've got an assignment here today. I am royally mad at the devil. I, I'm telling y'all, I am mad at the devil. I'm not mad at man. Uh, man's going to be man. But I'm telling you, the devil, I know he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I know John 10, 10. But I'm here today to give the devil some hell. I think it's time for the church to be the church. And listen to me. Either we believe this stuff or let's go home. Either it's real or I resign today. It's like this, guys. It is real. But today, I come with a word from the Lord. And I know you say, Brian, you say that often. Aren't you glad I get a word from the Lord before I preach? Aren't you glad I don't go to sermon, whatever it is, dot com and rob Peter to pay Paul? I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe the church is the answer for the modern day Christians here today. I believe God is the answer. I, hallelujah. I wish I had somebody to believe that God is the answer to our problems here today. He's still the answer. Amen. So here's the deal. I, I want to preach today on that subject. Tell the devil no. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell the devil no. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And I'm going to skip down to verse 10. I'm reading now the English Standard Version today. So if you want to follow James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, and then skip down to verse 10. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm ready. Y'all ready? Everybody ready? I'm ready to preach if y'all ready to listen. Amen. Let's just give God praise one more time. Let's set the atmosphere one more time. Amen. He's good. He's worthy. He woke you up this morning. I know that some of you don't feel good, but God is still good. He's still God. He's still on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready if y'all ready. Let's do this. Amen. James chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, verse 10, verse 10. The Bible says, submit yourself. Whoa, I can preach right there. I can do it. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Notice it did not say, submit yourself to government. <laughs> now, I realize there, there, where went the Holy Ghost. I can already tell. I'm telling you, as a spiritual man of God, if you want a spiritual blessing, you got to submit to a spiritual God. We got a lot of little G's in the world. I'm talking about the big G. I'm talking about the one and the only God. Amen. Oh, watch this. Here it goes. Resist the devil. Once you submit, watch, I love this. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I'm going to read that again. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. Some of y'all are welcoming him in. Hey, hey. Some of y'all are not resisting. The Bible says if you submit. And you resist the devil, he'll flee. I love this. Let me, let me preach this real quick. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We, we quote that. We say that. It's a vacation Bible school slogan, but it's so true. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. And we don't talk about this very much. Watch this. You, if you've got dirty hands and you're doing dirty stuff, you ain't going to be able to hold the presence of God. You're, you're not. Listen, I'm tired. You say, Brian, that's like Pentecostal. You call it what you want to call it. I'm preaching Bible today. Bible, what's what it says? Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Uh uh. And purify your hearts, you double minded. <laughs> I can't wait to preach this. Oh, you, yeah, you know why God is, listen, God wants to bless America. God's hand is on Elkhorn Baptist Church, God's hand's upon you, but you can't be wishy washy. You, you, can't, you can't be wishy-washy. You can't say, well, he'll do it for them and not do it. Watch. I'm just telling y'all, humble yourself before the Lord and watch what it says. And he'll lift you up. He'll lift you up. So my question to all of us after reading those verses is this. Why are we running from the devil when the devil should be running from us? Why are we running from the devil when the devil should be running from us? I'm going to say it again. Why is the church running from the devil when, when the devil should be running? I double dog dare him try to come in here today. 
I'll put him under my feet and stomp his head. I've, I've got the boldness of the Holy Ghost on me today. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. Why are you running from the devil when the devil should be running from you? There is power in this house. Let me get this into y'all spirit. The Bible says resist. Everybody say resist. Let me get Greek on y'all because here's the deal. Some people's like, well, if it ain't Greek or Hebrew, watch. <laughs> resist the devil and he will flee from you. The word resist. Everybody say resist again. Resist. Come on, the rest of you say resist. resist. Here's what in the, in the Greek, the word resist means to push back. To push back. To push back. Resist means to what? Resist means to, resist means to, I'm going to get y'all's attention one way or the other. Listen, there's a lot of you not pushing back. There's a lot of you just taking, taking the heat. Taking the heat. You're sitting back. You're, you're relaxed. You're sitting in your seats. I know you're here, but that don't mean you're here. You, the Bible says, resist the devil. Push him back. So that means the devil's going to push. How many of y'all know the devil, the devil going to push? The devil, devil going to push. But this also means, watch this, I can push back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can push back. So when the devil tries to come after me, you better not cower down. You better not tuck your tail and run. It's time to stand up and fight like a Christian. Not like a man. Fight like a Christian. How does a Christian fight? They, they push back. <laughs> they push back on hell. They push back. I'm here today to start preparing us for the next level of warfare. Amen. Yeah, because we don't know how to fight. Christians do not know how to fight in the spirit. We do not. We, we, know, we know Ephesians chapter 6. We not wrestle against flesh and blood. And we wrestle against the higher powers and principalities. But when they come at us, how do we fight? You know what the devil does? He makes us fight each other. And while we're fighting each other, hell's running rampant. So I'm here today to start teaching us. I know it's Advent season. I know today is the, the, the Sunday of hope. And that's all good Southern Baptist churches. But here, God put in my spirit. Brian, you better start preparing the people how to fight in the spirit. You better start telling people how to fight for their marriages in the spirit. I feel the Holy Ghost. You, you better start equipping the people to learn how to stand and fight in the spirit. Because I'm telling you, the devil is running rampant. Can y'all not tell? Can y'all not tell that we got a drug problem in South Central? Do y'all not know that our jails are full today of good people made a bad mistake, but they need a way out. They need some help today. Somebody help me, hallelujah. So I'm here today to tell, uh, tell all of us and tell me that Satan is coming after us. He is coming. And listen to me, it is not time to play patty cake church. It is not time to, for, the, for, the, for the weak Christian to sit there and go, well, Brian, that's just the way it is. No. It's not time to punch the time clock an hour on Sunday and go home and live like hell the rest of the week. It's not time. You say, well, Brian, what's going on with you? I am mad as hell at the devil. I'm, I hate him. And some of you are trying to play patty cake with him and say, well, just, just back off a little. Watch. He ain't going to back off. He knows his time is drawing nigh. But greater is he that's here today than he is in the world. We got a, we got a God that's still on the throne. And we got to know how to fight. You gotta gotta fight for your right to party. Y'all know that song. I'm talking about we gotta know how to fight in the spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say, Do you know how to fight in the spirit? Boy, we know how to fight in the flesh. We'll cuss that person out who pulls out on Highway 70. Somebody steal our parking spot at Walmart. Oh God. We know how to watch. We know how to fight each other. Y'all watch. Back off each other. You've got an enemy. I'm, I'm not, I come to play. I'm telling y'all, today's going to be a hard day for hell. Right. Satan right now, he said, oh God, El Corn's worse. You right. I'm going to give him trouble today. Yeah, yeah. How do we fight in the spirit? 
how do we fight in the spirit? We got enough religious people. That's not working. Well, listen to me. Time is running out. And I declare today it's time for us to stand up, push back, and tell the devil no. Stand up. Push back and tell the devil no. So listen, why does the church, I wrote this down in my personal note. I hear this all the time. Well, I just want to go back to normal. Boy, how'd that work out for y'all? Why, 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 why do you want to go back to normal when God created us for supernatural? Well, there's what? There is nothing normal about you, Jennifer. There is nothing normal about you, Willie Bland. There is nothing normal about Elkhorn Baptist Church. God created us to be supernatural human beings. And I know I'm going, I'm having to preach stuff that's already up in the Bible and tell Christians that you're supernatural. And they're sitting there going, really? Yeah, you're supernatural. There's nothing normal about your life. So listen, I'm here today, I'm looking for the real church. I'm here today to tell you, watch, there is nothing normal about these words I'm getting ready to say. Y'all ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. There's nothing normal about the words I'm getting ready to tell you, Christian. There's nothing normal about that. Saved. There's nothing normal about that. Born again. There's nothing normal about that. Filled with the Holy Ghost. There's nothing normal about that. Nothing. So I'm here today to look for the real church of Jesus Christ. A church that says enough is enough. Listen, you've got to get mad at the devil. We're mad, we're mad at Andy Bashir. We're, we're mad about everything that's going on around us. Why don't y'all blame the person who's causing it? Watch, if they bleed, they're not your enemy. Some of you are blaming family. Some of you are blaming pastor. Some of you are blaming deacon. Some of you are blaming everything around you. Why don't you go to the source, hallelujah, that's causing the confusion, that's causing the hurt, that's causing the divorce, that's causing the drugs. I'm preaching better than y'all acting today. You've got to get mad at the devil. Mm. Y'all may not feel it, but I feel it up here today. Hallelujah. I just need somebody to agree with this. Listen, God, God gives us power. God gives us grace. God gives us mercy. Hallelujah. God gives us the anointing to break the strongholds. God will bless us going in and God will bless us going out. It's got to become more than a Bible verse. You've got to believe it. How many of y'all believe in the name of Jesus Christ? The name that is above all other names. The name that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. He's still God. He don't need us, but we need him. Somebody give him praise in here today. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Everybody say, not today, devil. Now the rest of you say, not today, devil. Not today, devil. No, not, not today, devil. Enough is enough. And I take back what the Lord has given me. And you say, well, Brian, I can hear some of y'all in my, in my spirit. You're, <laughs> let me go ahead and read this to you real quick because this is, this is going to set the tone. This right here is the Bible verse that really breaks all the yokes. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. I love this. Everybody say, not today, devil. You got to get mad at the devil. Y'all hear me? I'm getting ready to read a verse that I've never preached on. I'm going to read a verse to y'all that uh, a lot, I, I don't think I've ever heard a sermon on this, this verse here. Because you know why? Everybody wants to be politically correct. The Christians want to take a licking and sit back, have the same seats, same parking spots. I'm telling y'all, we are in a battle. How many of y'all know we're in a battle? Please, please if, you, if you really believe that you're in a spiritual battle right now, I want you to raise your hand right now. To the rest of you, I feel sorry for you because you don't know how to fight in the spirit. Let me, let me read this. You say, Brian, there's something. I had someone two weeks ago, Mark, that came to me and said, um, you're preaching different. Yeah, time's running out. I am more passionate now. I've been doing this for 24 years. And I'm more on fire. I feel more of the Holy Ghost today. I feel the anointing of God. I feel the rain coming. I feel the fire coming. I feel things in my spirit brewing. And I just need a church that's going to stand up in this last hour and say, you know what? Enough is enough. Shut up, devil. Get behind me. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. 
Let me read it. Let me read it. I got to get busy. I got to get busy. I got to get busy. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Huh. But the men of God take it back by force. <laughs> yeah, so I can tell about where y'all are acting. Some of y'all probably never read it either. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the men of God take it back by force. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the men of God, the women of God, the church of Jesus Christ, takes it back by force. Did y'all hear this pastor today? It is not time to be politically correct. It is time for the men and women of God who are born again and know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to resist the devil, to push him back. To push him back. Devil, get your hands off my children. You, you will not come in here. And how do I know you want? I know we got a security team and I love every one of them. But watch this. You've got to spiritually push back. Spiritually push back. And that's what I'm going to teach y'all if y'all give me just a little bit. <laughs> and you say, well, Brian, because I can hear some of you, it's time to take it back by force. I, I'm not going to hurt nobody. I'm not asking you to hurt people. I'm asking you to push back on the devil. When the devil crosses over a line that was never intended for him to cross. When the devil is trespassing against you. Against your children. Y'all hear me? I feel, the devil's going to try. Listen, the devil, I'm telling you, listen to me. I'm trying to teach y'all spiritually. The devil's going to come through here and try to, to preoccupy you. Get your mind in another direction. Because this is a spiritual word. And you got to listen. you got to lean in. You gotta, I'm curious what you got to do. Listen. Listen to what God said. Somebody says to me, I felt this. I put this in mind. I felt it. Brian, that, that's just the way it is. Some things you can't change. I disagree with you a hundred percent. Prayer changes everything. Prayer changes everything. And evidently me and you are, are reading two different books. And evidently if you're saying that. Satan's got you right where he wants you. Because that's double minded. That's double my, I'm a child of God, but Brian, I just can't do this. I'm telling y'all today that God is with us. God is for us. And we're going to take back this generation. No more. You say, Brian, that's a big, big call. I'm telling we serve a big, big God. God can do it. But we got to want this stuff. We got to want this stuff. We got to want this stuff. Watch this. The greatest trick of the enemy. The greatest trick of the enemy is to put us in isolation. Lean in. Here's some, here's some, here it is right here. Some nuggets. He wants to separate us. You know why he wants to separate us? Because he knows when the church of Jesus Christ comes together, where two or three come together, touching and agreeing, I'll be in the midst. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We got a God. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost. We serve a God. When we come together, there's power in this house. Oh, come on. Somebody give him praise in here today. We, go. we don't serve a God that goes like that. We don't serve that kind of a God. We serve a God that'll do this. He'll be sitting down and all he go, no, 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 no. That's enough. That's my child right there. That's the kind of God. When God stands up, <laughs> when all authority stands up, and God says, I've given you all power. He did not say power just for Sunday to get by. I pray a bird comes under your spiritual saddle today. He just didn't give you power to get through your little situation. He gave us power, dominion, authority over everything on this earth. You listen to me. Abigail, you've done so good. Bree, you've done so good. Aaron, you've done so good. But I'm telling y'all, your best days are still ahead. I'm telling you that God's going to anoint you. I'm telling you. That's okay. He wants to separate us, separate us, separate us. He wants us to feel alone. That's why it's important to be at church. If you can. If you can. I, listen, I know there's situations, underlining health factors, I understand that some people, 
just can't come right now. And I honor you. But I'm going to tell you something. The church doors are still open. And I'm going to tell you something. Now, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling you all today, I, I'm going to give hell some problems. Listen, the first thing that Satan wants to do is isolate us. He wants to tear us apart. He wants to put us at home. And listen, I don't care what anybody says. I love Facebook. I love Facebook. But it's, there, there's an anointing up in here. There's a difference when you're sitting at home and you're, you're, and you're in this church house. I'm telling you, there's, there's a difference. I praise God for Facebook, but I'm, gonna tell, I'm glad God's up in my grill right now. I'm glad God's up in my book right now. I'm just telling you, in Jesus Christ's name, he, he wants to separate us. Satan wants to separate us. Stay connected to the church. He wants to isolate us. And watch this. I'm going to say something. This pandemic, it isolates people. And this pandemic is not of God. He may have allowed it. It is not of God. I'm going to take up for my Jesus this morning. It is not of God. He, he allowed it for some odd reason. That's why he's God and we're not. But I'm telling you, listen, you're going to find, I feel the Holy Ghost. You're going to find out who the true church is right now. You're going to find out who the warriors are right now. You're going to find out who's playing patty cake and who. This pandemic's of the devil. This pandemic's of the devil. I know, listen, we need to pray for our doctors. We need to pray for our nurses. If you work in the hospital, I'm telling y'all, thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. I know you're weary. I know you're tired. But you've got a church that loves you. We're standing behind you. We support you. Keep giving, keep giving, keep giving. Keep praying, keep praying. And God's going to bless you. Let's give our, let's give our healthcare workers a big old praise. And thank God. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for hospitals. Thank God for nursing homes. Thank God for all these beautiful people. Amen. Hallelujah. And here's what I found out. You probably won't stand until you need one. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you, you normally people who just sit there like, I'm telling you, you better be careful. You better be careful. Because I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name, Satan's after you. And if Satan can isolate you, I'm going to give y'all some keys here just for a second. Now I need y'all to lean in and listen. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8. Whew, feel the Holy Ghost. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, looking whom he may devour. I'm going to read that again. Be sober. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, looking whom he may devour. The devil does not play fair. <laughs> He's dirty. The devil will tell you a lie. And the first thing after studying this word, the first people that the devil looks for is the isolated people. Can, can, I, can I go Bible on y'all real quick? Because some of y'all are looking at me like, man, Brian, he just, he fights everybody. Oh, he does. But he looks. He's seeking. I'm going to expose this pandemic. He's looking. He's watching whom he may devour. If Satan can get you alone. If Satan can isolate you. If Satan can get you by himself. There's going to be three steps here right now. I'm getting ready to tell you. By, I'm, how many of y'all glad you come to church today? Because, man, listen, this is a word from God. This is a word from God, not from your pastor. I believe that I'm just a messenger today. But there's three areas that Satan attacked. Y'all remember Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 4? Let me give you something so crazy. Matthew chapter 3, Jesus answered his call. I'm going into the ministry. He was 30 years of age. He waited till he was 30 because the Bible says do not raise a novice. Do, in other words, do not put a spiritually immature person in a spiritual position and expect him to function. Oh, God, that's feeling good. So Jesus, at the age of 30, Matthew chapter 3, he said, I surrender to my call. I'm answering my calling. <laughs> he got baptized by John the Baptist. 
Where John said these words, uh, I'm not even worthy to unlace your standards. And God says, you are today, baptize me. So <laughs> listen to this. The very next chapter, Matthew chapter 4, <laughs> Jesus, he was going, his first calling, his first ministry job was called wilderness. He got placed in a isolated, by himself, no one wasn't around him, but Satan come to visit him. And I pray I give y'all some revelations, some quick nuggets. What happens when Satan isolates you? What happened to Jesus when he was in the wilderness, 40 days, 40 nights, no water, no food, he was by himself. Can y'all imagine 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness by yourself? So let me give you these three areas that Satan attacked Jesus. And listen, if he attacked Jesus, he's going to attack you. Because why? We're no better than Jesus. So watch this. Here's the three areas that Satan attacked. And he always will attack. Because Satan's not that smart. He's not. Number one, he attacked Jesus' body. Well, let, me, let me explain this pandemic. <laughs> This is a revelation from God. Y'all may not get it, but boy, I, I, I've, I've understanding this now. When he isolates you, the first thing he's going to attack is your body, your health. Your body, your health. Well, if this is bread or if this is a rock, won't you just turn it into a stone? Won't you eat it? Jesus' body was failing him. 40 days, 40 nights without bread, without water. First thing he done, he says, start talking to his body, his body, his health. The second thing, listen to this, so good. Was his identity. Uh, so listen to me very I know this is teaching. But I got to teach you. I know we're a hoop and holler shirt. But watch it. We, we got to get this teaching down. He'll attack. He'll isolate you. He'll attack your body. He'll attack your mind. Your health. The second thing is your identity. Well if you're Jesus. If you're truly Jesus. Why don't you just throw yourself down. And raise yourself back up. Well if you're truly a Christian. How come you're sick. Well, if you're truly a Christian, I'm preaching better than y'all are acting. If you're truly a Christian, how come this is happening to you? If you're truly a Christian, how come your body's failing you? The third thing, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, was his worship. His worship. Listen to me very carefully. Because y'all may not get this now, but you will later. He's going to attack your health, your body. He's going to attack your mind. Your identity. Well, if you're truly a Christian, where's your faith? And the last thing, listen to me, the last thing the devil will attack, he'll try to take your worship away from you. He'll, he'll try to take your worship away. That's why, listen to me, that's why when Greg Ford and his praise team gets up here, they're not just playing a guitar or a drum to entertain you. Why is it such a struggle to worship? Satan don't want you to worship. Hallelujah. He don't want you to even be here. And while you're here, let me go ahead and preach this really good. While you're here, well, if you're truly a Christian, why'd you do what you did Friday night? Well, if you're truly a Christian, how come you're doing this and your mind is just taking over? And the next thing you know, listen to me, stress is one of the leading killers of people today. He'll take your health, he'll take your identity, and he'll rob your worship. Somebody say, I got that. He sure will. But here's, let me, now let me give you the key. What did Jesus do to win in this pandemic? What did Jesus do to win in the wilderness? What did Jesus do when his health was being attacked, his mind was being attacked, his identity was being attacked, and his worship was being attacked? Y'all remember that? What did Jesus do? You got to go back to the word of God. You got to go back to the word of God. Listen to him. Here's exactly what he did. He resisted. Everybody say he resisted. He started pushing back. Hallelujah. He started pushing back. He stood on the word of God and he kept worshiping. I feel the Holy Ghost. He pushed back. He said these words. Listen to me. I know some of you are going, I just don't feel good. There's a reason why. There's an enemy behind sickness. I feel the Holy Ghost. You gotta call it out. 
You say, Brian, I ain't calling it out. Listen to me. Why did Jesus do this then? I'm teaching good. Why did Jesus do this then? He said, Satan, get away from me. Hallelujah. Get behind me. You've got to call that enemy by name out. Somebody help me preach in here today. Oh, listen, all this little wishy-washy stuff, well, I, I know I just don't feel good. And I hear this all the time. If I was the enemy, I would eat y'all for supper. Your minds. I hear this all the time. Well, that's just the way it is. Well, Brian, some things you can't stop. <laughs> you and I serve a different God. <laughs> you may serve the little G. I serve the big G. He's still king. He's sovereign. He knows it all. And listen to me, go and get all my theologians. Let me go ahead and tell you this. I know the Bible says in Hebrews, it's a pointing of the man wants to die. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. But watch this. This is not my home. I realize that. Amen. I realize I was not born here to live here forever. My home is over in glory. My home is up in heaven. I got streets of gold waiting on me. I got a mansion waiting on me. And I'm kind of homesick today. I kind of feel Holy Ghost today. I kind of know that God's going to do a mighty good work in this place. I know this is not my home. You know why you're... We're selfish. We're selfish. We're selfish. And this is what God had to do to me this week to get me here. We're selfish. We got to learn to resist. Watch me. Push back. Everybody say push back. The rest of you say push back. You got to resist. You got to push back. <laughs> he stood on the word of God. He stood on the word of God. I don't care how many alphabets you got in front of your name, behind your name. I don't care what, <laughs> what degrees you got in front of your name. Watch this. You better learn how to push back. Amen. You better learn how to stand on the word of God. Yes, you better learn. How did I do that? And watch this. Crazy. Radio corn. And we're blessed here. We're blessed here. But God spoke this into my spirit. You tell them to learn how to push back, stand on the word of God, and to continue to worship. Yes. Continue to worship. That's why when I say, hey, let's take a 10-second praise break. I see. You already see how you, I'm telling you. Do y'all realize that we're all going home soon? Listen to me. I don't care how young y'all are. I don't care. Watch. I'm just telling y'all. I'm trying to get us prepared. Listen, because I really believe there's always, it always gets worse before it gets better. And we got, Courtney, we got to know how to fight in the spirit. We got to know how when the devil start crosses the line, steps in my territory, I'm not going to tuck my tail and run back to my house and say, well, that's just the way it is, daggone, and get mad at everybody else around me. No, I, I declare today a church with the unction that's going to stand up and push back and say enough is enough. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to praise his precious name. I don't understand it, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. Nobody's going to rob my praise. Nobody's going to stop my worship. I got a mouth. I'm going to open it in Jesus' name. I know how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. It's crazy. It's crazy. Push back. Everybody say push back. Everybody say push back. That's where resist, resist, resist. Push, push, push. Push. You're not getting my children. Daggone you devil. You're not. Enough is enough. Let's get mad. I know I don't normally tell you all this. But I'm pretty rolly. I'd be good. I am mad at the devil. I am mad this morning. You say, well, I can tell the way you're preaching. I ain't talking to you. I'm telling y'all, that person sitting beside you is not your enemy. That mom or dad who left is not your enemy. I am not your enemy. We, listen, I'm just telling y'all what I feel in my spirit. It is time for Elkhorn Baptist Church to stand up. And get a T-bone back rail. I'm telling you, backbone. And, and just stand there and say, enough is enough. I'm going to push back. You're not going to get my marriage. You're not going to get my children. You're not going to come through this church. You're not going to get my health. You're not going to get my mind. You're not going to get my worship. You're not going to get my identity. And Satan, if you cross this line, I'm going to push you back. You got to push him back. 
Some of you have dropped your arms. Some of you have dropped your arms. You have surrendered to the wrong G. I see it. I hear it. Well, I know I shouldn't be like this, but I am. Boy, that's a good excuse. And if I get put in the hospital, and if you're not a faith person, please stay at home. Amen. Well, you got to have to. Now I've got that social distance going on there, preacher. And good. <laughs> I want people that's full of the Holy Spirit. That believe, hallelujah, that believes that the same God that raised Lazarus can raise Brian Rafferty. If I lay my hands upon you, I'm standing on the word of God. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. You will not get my pastor. You will not get my church. Y'all help me preach today. We need to push back. Everybody say push back. Everybody say push back. Come on, the rest of you, push back. You gotta push back. You gotta resist that punk. Sissy. I'm telling y'all, before I got up here, I told Dane, I said, you need to pray for me. And I gave her a pre-worship service in the bathroom. That's all right. That's my marriage. So here's the deal. Have you dropped your arms or are you pushing back? I'm looking at an army. And listen to me. Y'all with me? I'm done. Praise to, Greg, you come. Praise team, whoever who you are. <laughs> Let's land this plane. I'm looking at warriors. I'm looking at an army. Well, Brian, I feel like a dry bone. Let me pray over you. You become a stack of ribs. I'm, listen. If people come to me. And they say, Brian, I'm sick. I don't feel good. I do not, Joel. You know me. You've been with me now for a little over a year in the ministry. What if I were to go, yeah, just go ahead and accept it. <laughs> it is what it is, preacher. <laughs> Y'all, come on. Come on. No. Travis Gibbon, push back. Yeah. Perry Skaggs, push back. The Bible says in Matthew, I feel the Holy Ghost, that if the enemy comes, he's got to get through the strong man before he gets to the family. I'm looking for some strong men this day, hallelujah. You may try to come to my house. You may try to get my children, but you ain't going to get in. I'm going to push you back. Uh, for the rest of you, y'all keep calling. You got to learn how to fight. In the spirit. Here's where I'm at in my journey. Can I just be honest with y'all for a second? So when me and Dana disagree, I used to get so mad at her. Abigail, I just get so mad at Dana. I used to get so mad, Sarah. I, would go, I ain't going to tell y'all. So now I'm learning. I'm learning. And I know my granny said, Brian... Wine gets good with age. Well, call me a cup of wine then. I don't care what you, listen. I'm just saying. I'm learning. I think for so long, the church has blamed people. When there's an enemy behind that voice. Oh, let me, let me, let me prove y'all biblically why God is speaking to me like so good. Peter. When Satan, no. Thank you, Holy When Peter... I love when God speaks. It's so good. When Peter was speaking death and Peter, Peter was cussing and Peter was doing all them things. Y'all remember what Jesus said? He said, Satan, get thee behind me. So maybe we're blaming people when there's a spirit behind the person. Oh, Brian, I know that. That's just so deep. I'm telling y'all, can y'all imagine right now, Jesus Christ, if all of us push back, push back, where two or three come together, touch in the green, God will be in the midst. Whatever you ask, God will give you. From the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom. Can y'all imagine if we become a church, a push back church? That's a good bumper sticker right there. Push back. I, I go to a push back church. That's a good bumper sticker. Write that down, Dan. I'm going to get that. I go 
to a pushback church. I go, I don't know where y'all go. But when the enemy comes at me, if I, if I tuck my tail and I just settle and settle and settle. Man, listen, if I was the enemy, I know Paul Harvey done said it. But if I was the enemy, if I were the devil, no wonder Satan's having a heyday at church. We're agreeing with him. I feel the Holy Ghost. We're agreeing with him. If you serve I put, and you, you worship at a pushback church, I want you to stand to your feet. I want y'all to learn how to push back. So how many of y'all today, be honest with me, we're going to learn how to push back right now. We're going to learn how to push back right now. We're going to learn how to push back right now. How many of you right now are going through something in your life and you can feel that Satan is pushing you, pushing you, pushing you, pushing you, besides your pastor, pushing you and pushing you. How many? Come on, raise your hand. The rest of you line. Everybody got something. If you don't, I promise you, there's just a matter of time where you're going to feel a push. What are you going to do during the push? I got five said it. What are, you, what are you going to learn to do when Satan is pushing your children around at school? What are you going to do when, man, your boss walks in and they lay you off? And don't push him back or her back. Because you really, you'll go jail and, yeah. Listen to me. This is, this is it right here. There is a voice. There is an enemy behind that. Choose your battles wisely. Be sharp. <laughs> Be sharp. So in Jesus Christ's name, every person that's standing, may God give you the spirit of pushback. 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 Y'all may not remember a lot about this sermon, but you're going to remember pushback. When Satan comes after my children, I better be a daddy that knows how to push back. When he comes in at Elkhorn Baptist Church, I'm, I'm just learning this stuff so y'all get what I learned. Because <laughs> I've, I've, I've found myself, my identity. Have y'all have been that, Willie? Your, your identity. Well, Brian, if you're truly a man of God, how come this is going on? And how come you can't do that? How can, your identity. And if you're not careful, you know, here's what will happen. Y'all ready? He'll rob your worship. Yeah. He'll rob your worship. I'm looking for a church today that's got the spirit of pushback. That God's for me. That God's got me. That God's going to use me. My assignment did not get aborted. That I still got purpose in my life. That God's going to use me no matter if my yesterdays or five years or ten years from in the past. God's going to use me. And when Satan comes at me, I got something on me that he don't like. It's called pushback, hallelujah. I'm going to push him back where he belongs. So in Jesus Christ's name, I'm done. How many of y'all glad you come to church today? Amen. 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 Somebody give God praise. Come on. If you're not careful, he'll rob your praise. He'll rob your clap. He'll rob you. 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 He'll come after your body. He'll come after your health. He'll come after your identity. And he'll come after your worship. That's Bible. How do you get back? You resist. You resist. You resist. What is resist? Resist means huh, you cross the boundary. You cross the line. You're in my territory now. I'm going to push you back. Watch this. Push him back to hell. Push him back. So this altar is going to be open. And here's what I wrote in my notes as I close. If you pass the test. Yeah. If you pass the test. The glory will come. Yeah. The promotion will come. The advancement will come. The open door will come. The elevation will come. And you'll go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to amen to amen to amen to amen. If you pass the test. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you told me to do. I've delivered the word to God that you told me to preach. 
God bless these precious people God I'm learning God thank you for speaking thank you for delivering thank you Father God for the way that you still speak and God may we listen to the right voice may the spirit of pushback hallelujah get on us enough is enough and so Lord in Jesus Christ's name may this altar be filled with your presence protect your people and I pray this prayer believing dear God that all things are possible with you in Jesus name and all God's people say it.